Welcome to the Pinch to Zoom podcast. I'm Stetson. And I'm Gabe. And in this episode, we are talking about the best smartphones, cameras, and innovations of 2019. And also the worst. Yeah, we're, we're bringing in a diverse mix of tech products. It was, a, it was a diverse year, and I think we got a lot of things to talk about. It honestly seemed like the year was like 500 years long. You know, it just took forever to get through. So I had to do a lot of going back and looking at what actually happened over the past year. Honestly, even over the past couple of months, like when we hit Techtober and Tech November, so many things just came out from so many different companies. We had a lot of products it's a hit whole the new market. Year, yeah. Right? Yeah, it almost seems like it, but then there's still, you know, the June tech releases before summer and the CES releases from the beginning of the year. Yeah, a lot of stuff happened this year. We only got about 20 more days left as of talking well as of you listening to this right now most likely uh 20 days left of the decade even yeah that's that's unbelievable we're almost at 2020 uh so i think before we dive in to the best tech of the year we should start off with quick news yes yeah, quick, 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 quick news quick news you know i was just thinking about this very unoriginally named segment so i don't know do we want a new name going into 2020 or no i think we got it I mean, we could, we could, you know, quick news, extra Spice news, it up. plus max. Yeah, just keep adding more names. Well, just this will just be quick news too in 2020. I like it. Or quick I like news it. 2020, more focused, better vision or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, yeah, pull in like yeah. one of those vision play on words. I like it. Exactly. We, we should we should get into the actual news though. Well, speaking of a two end of 2020, we had some leaks around a new drone coming out in 2020. And yeah, Gabe, what what is this drone? I feel like you're super into anything that flies. What is heading our direction in 2020 for drones? Well, we obviously have talked about in the past that the Mavic 3 is going to be coming out, you know, in 2020 expected very early, honestly, because DJI didn't do much this past year. So they're going to get a jump on it most likely either at CES or honestly with them, it's they're going to do an Apple thing most likely. You, you think know. they're going to have their own dedicated event for the Mavic 3? Yeah, that's that's probably what's going to happen. Um, we'll w- wait and see, though. Very excited to see what will happen there. And then we also had the Skydio 2 that came out, but it's not really even out because it's just starting to ship. And I placed a pre-order or a reservation, that is, on the day within hours of it being launched, and I haven't received my email to order it yet. So it's not looking too good for them on that one. Yeah. So has anyone actually received their ordered unit yet? I think people have. I don't know. I was seeing on Twitter people who are at least receiving their emails to order the drone. And I think I saw some reviews popping up of people who had received it and not, you know, the ones that just got sent out for free, actually people who ordered it. So it looks like they are shipping it. But it's a very slow uh, rate of shipping and right. order fulfillment. And and what I'm waiting for is someone who can film a high quality review and provide deep insights into the drone, not someone who just happens to have a camera and throw something up on the internet. Um, also, you know, quickly diverting, uh, something I thought about is the pre-order for the Skydio 2 was only $100, which was the same as the Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah, 10% of the drone versus, uh, what is that eventual cost? Uh, 30, I don't know, 40,000? Like 4%, 4% or something? Ridic- yeah, ridiculously small percentage of the um, t- Cybertruck. So that, yeah, that's interesting. But both refundable, so it doesn't really matter. Anyways, we talked about those two, two drones. Those are going to be, obviously, dominant drones in 2020. However, we now have a new contender entering the ring, like you said, flying in fast uh, via some FCC filing leaks. It is the Autel Evo 2. Whoa. Now, yeah, we haven't heard about Autel in a while. Uh, The full name Autel Robotics. I'm pretty sure they're an American-based company um, out of like Seattle or someplace like that. And their drone, the Autel, well, first I think they had the Autel something, I don't know, Star Robotics, some kind of weird name. Looked very Chinese made, but it was American. Then they had the Autel Evo, which was really cool, but was quickly overshadowed by the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro. And the Autel Evo still has a lot of fans. If you've seen it online, it's the orange drone, so it instantly stands out. Now the Autel Evo 2 looks like it could leapfrog ahead 
of the Mavic 2 and even the Mavic 3, if some of the specs are right, um, just like some of the quick ones, obviously, you know, it's going to have good vi video resolution, right? That's a big thing. That's got to be number one. Yeah. However, they're saying this could be shooting up to 6K video on a one inch sensor. That would be outstanding for a yeah. drone. And so it's going to, the, the rumors are, and leaks, which seem to be locked in as pretty true, it's going to be a user-changeable gimbal module. So that'll be nice. You can buy one version of it, buy a new gimbal, kind of like the Inspire, change that out for a different camera. So the 383 gimbal will be the 6K gimbal and camera with the one-inch sensor. Then you'll have an 8K video option on a different gimbal, which will be 48 megapixel photos. However, it will be a smaller um, sensor. So maybe not as good quality there, but it will be huge resolution. Like we, there's like one phone that records 8K, and other than that, it's like you know, ten to twenty thousand dollar red cameras. Do you? I mean, do you think this drone is competing with the Mavic Pro, or is this going directly against the Inspire? No, this is definitely competing against the Mavic uh, Three or, or the Mavic Pro because yeah, just size wise, you know, someone who's going to buy an Inspire is on a different level, you know, and resolution isn't even everything when you're buying an Inspire. It's all about flight characteristics, options, upgradability, accessories, bit depth, ton more things there. But yeah, this would be incredible to, if... I, I almost don't believe the fact that it's going to have 8K. We'll still have to see how true that is. You know, Autel in, in the past announced that their Evo was going to have a one-inch sensor option. Never never came to fruition. They showed it off at CES, never came out. You know, I think that was like three years ago when they announced it. And so... We'll have to wait and see what actually gets announced, what actually gets released, because they also supposedly are going to be releasing a dual sensor gimbal, which has an infrared camera and then also has, you know, a regular camera. So you can overlay the image, which is really helpful. That could be good. And, and that sounds like it would almost compete with the P4 multispectral from DJI. Well, well, either that or the Mavic 2 Enterprise, probably more sure. likely the Enterprise because spectral is more for your crop sensing. Uh, like crop farmers, stuff like that, or the well, enterprise search and rescue. We'll we'll definitely have to wait and see on that. I'm interested. I I love competition in the drone space. Uh, something to spice up the market from just DJI. Um, yeah. This I would say the Autel Evo Two sounds like a pretty pro machine. And we also saw something exciting come out. Wait, hold for... on, hold on. There's more. Don't don't just move on. I'm like we've waited a whole year for good drone news. Um. So okay, let me just well, run couple more specs give me give me three more specs okay okay what we got camera specs what a okay. battery life is that a spec yeah battery life 35 minutes they're saying oh that's really good top speed of 44 miles per hour which is about on par with on par uh, the mavic 2 and they're saying that it's gonna have um operating distance of 16 miles okay i mean that at what point does visual line of sight just like not I can see 16 miles, something that's the size of a toaster. <laughs> I doubt yeah. it. I mean, like... No, but... Well, the the key thing is 16 miles, yeah, you should not be using it out that far. Um, maybe one day we'll be allowed to fly out that far. You know, the FAA will grant beyond line of sight flights as drones get more safe. But the big thing is if you have up to 16 miles, it makes your flights when you're a thousand feet and there's a lot of Wi-Fi signals, a lot of buildings possibly in the way, a lot of competing noise that you're going to have a crystal clear, low latency flight um, and no issues with controller. That's really important, especially for capturing video footage. That really helps make sure everything's super smooth, super cinematic and framed properly. So you know, that yeah. could be really huge for the Autel Evo 2. But yeah, and also they're going to continue on with their remote controller having a built in OLED screen. So you don't even need your phone to fly it. So that's yeah, definitely a huge, very, plus. very excited for this drone. You know, I've been a pretty much DJI flyer since the GoPro Karma disaster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was yeah. the only other option, really. Yeah, and I mean, the Skydio 2, honestly, I'm probably going to pass up as it's taking longer than I want, because by the time I'll get to pre-order it, this drone could be out, or the Mavic 3, and this is really, 2020 is going to be exciting for drones. It looks like we're going to see the kind of the, the you know, the I'd say it's the Gen 3 of drones. You've got the Gen 1 was your phantoms you know right and stuff like that gen 2 are these new foldable drones where they've got incredible sensing and skydio is the next generation i think skydio mavic 3 stuff it's even better sensing and incredible cameras 
combined to make some really sweet drones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm excited as well. And I think we could see some new players in the field. Like I'll yeah. tell with this Evo 2, um, we're having Parrot maybe coming out with their Parrot 3. Yeah, we haven't we haven't heard much about them recently. Uh, they also haven't launched any drones recently. So yeah, that would be you know, right? very I exciting mean, to see. We'll see what comes flying out of the hangars in yeah, uh, 2020. Using that 8K video though, you might need a good camera to edit on or new laptop or computer to edit on, right? Yeah, yeah. Good, good coming back with that segue. I there appreciate go, yeah. that. I return it. I canceled um, you earlier. So anyway, yeah. So what's coming out, what's exciting is Apple has officially announced after much, much waiting that the Mac Pro will be available to order starting December 10th. Now, what this means is we'll finally be able to see what the pricing is on this new machine. Yeah, true spicings and br- pricings and breakdowns. Right. And, um, you know, I think, Gabe, we made some predictions earlier on, and I think our range was anywhere from like 24,000 to 34,000 maxed out. We'll, we'll definitely be sure to cover that uh, as soon as it is released. Um, but yeah, I think for a lot of pro users, it's exciting. This confirms it is coming out. Uh, right before the end of the fall deadline. And I think Apple is hoping to start shipping this starting December 22nd or around that that time. So this could be well, good. That'll be good, yeah. Buy yourself a nice $8,000 Christmas gift. Oh, yes. Yeah. cheese grater. Cheese grater. You got to have that cheese grated to perfection. Yeah. Moving on, we got a new product, uh, just a kind of new product from Moza. Um, they are makers of gimbals, uh, stuff like that. Gimbals, I guess, mainly is the only thing they make. And well, they they made something pretty interesting that they launched at NAB, right? Or they had yeah, at NAB? Yeah, NAB it was the SlyPod, which was a very cool cross between a slider and a monopod, as the name would kind of suggest. Honestly, one of the more exciting products of the gear. However, it was a bit held back by the fact that it has a $500 price tag. And yeah, that's... That's a bit hard to stomach on a product that you don't, there's nothing really out to test, right? If there's, you know, if you've used a gimbal before and they've, you know, become mainstream, all right, yeah, I can drop a couple hundred to a thousand dollars on that. However, uh, something that's completely brand new, there's nothing like it in the marketplace. It's a bit hard to justify, you know, putting $500 down on it to pick it up when you're like, all right, let me just go with something I know or stick with my gear I have and maybe wait for the next generation or, or to become released by someone else so that was yeah that was i was looking at it really like i should buy it but in the end i ended up holding off buying a different slider and now though maybe i'm gonna regret it because they just released the moza slypod e which e standing for economy is a cheaper version at only 300 dollars, exactly the same specs except for it's made from aluminum wow so they basically took their moza slypod and they made it out of aluminum and decreased the price and this is available today yeah, available shipping now from their own site. I don't think it's available through B and H currently at the moment. Um, they're trying to, you know, obviously they they pay a less a percentage, you know, of is going to cost when you're um, selling it through your own site, and not through a third party retailer. So they're gonna get those initial orders through their own website. And yeah, I mean, it looks like for three hundred dollars, I'm thinking about getting it again. I mean, I did just. Uh, order the Rhino Arc 2 slider, so probably actually I won't buy the Slypod E, but for someone else who has been looking at getting the Slypod, this is um, definitely sweetens the deal or, I don't know, yeah. It's a I heavier, think, it's a little heavier, but it's lighter on your pocketbook. I, I think it makes it uh, a more compelling option when you compare, or excuse me, you pair the Slypod E with one of Moza's already established gimbals, this really allows from, uh, for some creative cinematic camera moves. And uh, again, that lower price point just makes that combo that much more affordable. So Yeah, you're looking at, like I think, for a uh, Slypod E and a gimbal, that's like around 800 now rather than 1,000. for a three ax- You're getting three-axis camera movement. And that, that seems a lot more like something that someone would look into getting. Or if you already have one of their gimbals, it's now only three hundred dollars to add like slider like shots to it. Right, absolutely. Any other uh, comments on the Moza Slypod E? Uh, not really. I mean, go take a look at it if you're at all into filmmaking, and you know, it might be might be something to check out. I would think that DJI or some of the other you know gimbal makers have to be thinking that you know maybe they should create something like this, a slider of some sort. 
Yeah, because it, I mean, they're probably watching to see how well this does, though, is my bet. It's definitely a unique product. Um, all right, well, moving on, the I think the next big thing that we had happen in these past couple of weeks is T-Mobile rolled out their 5G network. Uh, they basically just flipped a switch and turned it on uh, on December Whoa. 6th, which okay. is pretty crazy. And, and that's uh, everywhere? or So it is... T-Mobile is branding it as, quote, nationwide. However, mm, that, um, sounds, still, that sounds very, that sounds like an easily, like, ambiguous term. It, it is. like, And what defines nationwide? It is, if you look at a coverage map, technically kind of spattered across the United States. It is covering 60% of the U.S. population, about 200 million people. However, it's failing to cover... Uh, over 130 million Americans. So, you know, I think there's definitely uh, that's, debate. That's kind of that's kind of like if you're just wearing, you know, underwear, socks, and a hat, and you say you're covered from head to toe. Yeah, yeah, that's a. I mean, a very similar now. Or, or like you forgot to wear pants, and you're like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm dressed and ready for the day. Yeah. So maybe, maybe. Well, I how think, how are reviews about speed and stuff? Well, so here's the thing about all 5G. We have basically uh, two different approaches. Verizon is starting with what's called millimeter wave. This is high frequency wavelengths that allow for super fast data speeds. The problem, coverage is super limited. You have to be right next to a Verizon 5G tower uh, to get those data speeds. It won't go through buildings, it's easily blocked. Uh, So what T-Mobile is doing is the other approach. They released their 600 millihertz spectrum, which is a much lower frequency, gets significantly better coverage, uh, can go through, has better building penetration um, and better coverage overall. Um, But it's not really hitting those impressive 5G speeds. T-Mobile's only seeing about a 20% increase in data speeds on average from their 4G LTE network. Um, So kind of a mixed bag there. It is covering the most people compared to Verizon, um, but you do also need one of T-Mobile's 5G compatible phones, which right now only includes the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition or the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G. Okay, well, those are, yeah. I mean, I think those, what are those going to set you back price-wise, do you know? Yeah, so the the, one. the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition, love that name, <laughs> not actually, but yeah. that is $900, so actually not too bad, and the Note 10 Plus 5G, I think starts at $1,200 or $1,300, so yeah. that that is up there for, again, only a 20% increase in data speeds on average, only in, I guess, around 60% of the US at this point. That is a bit underwhelming, but we'll definitely see more phones coming out in 2020. And as you know, as we get on a year or two out from this point, we'll you know it'll become more mainstream. Kind of basically the same with the 4G rollout and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I mean that's exciting. If you live in rural areas, though, I'm I'm assuming this will take a lot longer to get out. It's going to be they're focusing on cities, high density urban areas first then rural areas so by the time pretty much every phone has 5g then maybe you'll have the option potentially of having I think, 5g i think the biggest impact will come next year if apple's 2020 iphone supports 5g i think that's when we'll start seeing the most difference or more people will actually start seeing a difference as opposed to having these very I limited think, honestly i think i think i apple is going to release one iphone that has 5g and there's going to be another version that doesn't probably you know i could see that it's expensive technology it could and, drastically and don't don't they also have to pay like royalties or like something to patent something to um qualcomm i think till like 2021 or 2022 i don't know i can't comment on that but i will I'm pretty say sure i read something about that where they're yeah they owe like the f- something for patent rights that Qualcomm has it patented um, and exclusivity until 2021, I'm pretty sure. So Apple might hold off using 5G and all of theirs until they don't have to pay that. I would say battery life is the other big hit. Like Oh, true. Yeah. Right. Like it, it doesn't really make sense if you're you're not really getting the benefits right now, but still something to keep your eyes on, especially going forward into the next decade. Yeah. All right. Anything else in quick news or that's all I got. 
Yeah. Um, well, let's just actually we can put this into quick news. What did you get on Black Friday? Just kind of. Oh, okay. You know, it's funny. It's funny you should bring this up. Technically, the only purchase of any item that was on sale were my Injinji toe socks. What? Um, what did you say? Your what socks? My Injinji toe socks. That's right. The only item that I got on Black Friday that was actually on sale were toe wow. socks. I thought you were. I thought you said something Chinese or Japanese. No, but. in Jinji. If you need toe socks, in Jinji makes okay, the if you best need toe, toe socks. socks. You need some help. No, Gabe, what did what did you get on Black Friday? I'm um, hoping Black Friday a, anything more exciting than me. I picked up some movies, some DVDs from Best Buy. Uh, if you want to ask, I got Avengers Endgame and uh, what was the other one? I got um, Captain Marvel. So obviously a big fan of uh, superhero movies. Picked those up for like. 15 bucks both digital copy and everything um i think that was pretty oh no i did get the rhino arc 2 like i said earlier for 10 percent off so a little bit of savings there and one of my weirder purchases was i bought a itunes gift card um from amazon for 40 bucks it's a 50 dollar gift card you know i spend three uh three bucks a month on icloud i'm like all right just save 20 percent, i guess for the next year yeah. i don't know I mean, that's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah. If you have a subscription, so. Nothing nothing too interesting here either. Uh, so that was, yeah, not not the most exciting Black Friday for me. Um, obviously, I bought some stuff for my family, but I can't really say that on the podcast because yeah, they do they listen could be to listening. this. So don't want to say that. But yeah, moving on from, that was quick news. Quick news, quick, quick news, news, quick news, quick news. Uh, well, before we get into the meat or the heart of this you know podcast and talk about the best the worst and everything in between for 2019 let's say what we're not sponsored by this episode absolutely so, can uh, you explain what not sponsored is yeah sure give a give a quick two sentence what are we doing uh give a not sponsored uh um, yeah okay we'll do three not sponsored. sponsored segments we okay. will not sponsor the first segment about what it is and then okay. we can go ready this this is all right yeah uh, this not sponsored ep- podcast episode, I would like to say that we're not sponsored by uh, the not sponsored segment that we do, which is the fact that we are not sponsored by anyone. So we take time to give you some unsolicited advice, some unsolicited product uh, recommendation or whatever else we really want to talk about for 30 seconds, like an ad. So wait, wait, yeah. let me let me just check my email. OK, that agreement fell through. OK, yep. I got oh, a new no. product. New product just came in for me. Wait, hold on a second. You're just being too blatant about the fact that you are getting paid under the table from these companies. Oh, man, this is not... Guys, this is highly unusual. But I'm going to say, if you're you know, on the podcast, it has that skip. When Stetson goes to talk, hit that skip thing twice to jump forward 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. That's brutally yeah, skip strategic. That ad. The, uh, well, the skip button um, is 15 seconds on the dot. Yeah, so. Right. so Anyway. Well, who went first last time? I think I went first. Okay, so I can go first this time. Yeah, are you All ready? Right. I got my shot clock up. Cue it up. Get the shot clock ready. On dribble, your mark. Dribble, dribble, dribble. I'm ready. Get set. Begin. Uh, first, I'd like to say that we're not sponsored this episode by the GTEC Armor ATD external hard drive. Now, this is my favorite hard drive of the year. I love to back up all my files. If you have a computer that uses USB-C, this is very cheap inexpensive you can get five terabytes for 150 dollars super fast super durable drive or if you don't need that much it's even two terabytes for 89 dollars so yeah very affordable nice looking blue drive get it and... i wish it was sponsored by them they yeah that was good pretty stuff, good you were but... you were plugging them pretty hard sounds like a good product yeah. yeah you should i know you only use two hard drives so yeah i just switched to google drive that's my new yeah. thing yeah, you all don't right. even need a real drive. It's just all in the cloud. Well, let me get my shot clock up for you. 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, and one, go. This episode of the Pinch to Zoom podcast is not sponsored by snow tires. The winter season is here. The roads get icy, cold, slippery, and dangerous. Snow tires are a great way to improve your driving safety and reliability of your car. They can decrease stopping distance Uh, by 50%, so cut stopping distance in half. Make sure you're safe and sound this winter season. Consider picking up snow tires for your vehicle today. Uh, You can go to Tire Rack or another dealer. 
I was, you know, I just realized when you were saying that, um, that snow tires sounds like they're tires made out of snow <laughs> rather than tires made for snow. You, you just start going and then, uh, I don't know, the discs where your wheels are just start spinning. Just and then like s- a snowball, yeah. <laughs> right? Like it just builds the tires every time. You just get a monster truck Actually, by the end of your drive. That's, that's not a bad idea. Hold on a second. Let me just call up Goodyear. Hello, Mr. Goodyear. I have a new idea for tires. Oh, wait, they they say that won't work okay oh interesting well, you know it's funny you say that well gabe that was uh maybe not the best idea for for this year but we do have some pretty good ideas some good okay. products that came out that was um, a good segue some I some say. good good things good segues yeah. right anyway so we have the best of 2019 the best cameras well, the top the top of 2019 the top the of top 2019 cameras top smartphones but also the top fails of tech stuff and and so. innovations and innovations too so what do you want to kick it off which category do you th- feel the best about i feel like maybe we should do smartphones okay all right we're both that's kind of the you know the meeting ground between our two interests smartphones have cameras on them they also are, have cell phone plans on them too so there we go boom all right let's you i went first for the not sponsored you can kick this off what is your top smartphone for 2019 Stetson. Yeah, so I'm going Apple iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro. Ooh, and I, Apple fanboy in the I, house. Yeah, you okay. know, I didn't really want to do this because personally, I wasn't a huge fan. When I watched the yeah. announcement, iPhone 11 and 11 Pro were kind of a letdown for me. Apple really only improved three things, battery life, camera, and processor. Didn't really feel like a huge upgrade over my iPhone XS, which I'm actually keeping and continuing to use as my daily driver however i I thought about it and um it turns out those three things are exactly what people wanted they wanted a bigger battery for better battery life they wanted improved cameras and i think the iphone 11 and 11 pro have arguably some of the best cameras on a mobile device this year and this is all enabled by that faster processor so uh for me I'm going iPhone 11, and Apple even decreased the price, $50. iPhone 11 now starts at $699. Um, instead of the $749, the iPhone XR started at. Okay. So, my, my tongue is bleeding from the amount. I just had to bite my tongue. Okay, um, Gabe. I mean... I, I will give you the iPhone 11. I actually had that as my second option. But I would not... The iPhone 11 Pro, I don't think, can be included as the best smartphone. Okay. Okay. Uh, for 2019 that's just my personal opinion i mean you just like you said you're using still the 10s you sold back your 11 pro oh yeah and like maybe 11 is it that's that should be the winner like i can i I can get behind that i would say yeah i'd say this is possibly because i am an iphone user and i've never really used android much in the past that i felt like i had to go away from iphone for choosing what my best smartphone was of 2019 which is weird because i haven't actually really used it much other than like in stores but i think personally the uh the one plus device that they dropped this year the 7t um or the 7t pro i think is really something i think it's bringing next gen stuff with their 90 hertz displays you know their cameras are still on par with everything else and yeah i mean i don't i don't know i mean i i just think of all the android devices i would switch to Samsung does make some good stuff, but I would probably go with OnePlus personally. I I really like that choice. And, you know, the 90 hertz display refresh, the underneath the glass fingerprint reader yeah. and that edge to edge display. I think OnePlus really was pushing the envelope in terms of smartphone tech this year. Uh, so I, I do think that's a good choice. Personally, their phones are actually too big for me. Uh, they have no sort of plus size Smaller, and, and yeah, small size so um, i can get that but yeah and i mean i i hesitated also because they did go up price uh in their phones this year a good amount i'm pretty sure right i think it, it did go up a little bit they're kind of they started out really more budget friendly and now one plus yeah, i is, think well i guess that's yeah that's the big change they're they they're like budget. um they're on par with apple and and samsung now so but yeah that was personally that was for me uh my smartphone choice now let's go to camera i guess because you know smartphones have cameras so this could possibly also be a smartphone that we chose um but i'll go first here my top camera i think for 2019 this was a tough one you know 
Um, but I'm gonna have to go with the A7S3. What? Oh wait, no, that wasn't released. What? Sorry. Yeah, Ooh. that should have been the best camera for the past two years, honestly, because they should have released it in 2018, then also in 2019. But it hasn't come out, so I'm gonna have to give it to the Panasonic S1H. Now, not a cheap camera, four thousand dollars. Also, not a small camera, a couple pounds for a mirrorless camera, but. It's really the S1H and the whole Panasonic S1 line. This is the first time that Panasonic has launched a full-frame camera, their first full-frame camera they've brought to market. And this S1H, the video-specific version of this line of mirrorless cameras, is the first 6K consumer camera for under really 5,000. That's a mirrorless or DSLR type camera. Panasonic, so. they really packed a lot of specs into the S1H and made it a pretty compelling offer. Um, yeah. But I mean, $4,000 is still expensive, and it's quite honestly a chunky camera. Like this is a- Oh, it's huge. This is a massive camera. This is not- But when you, but when you consider what it could be replacing of either a larger cinema camera or something like, you know, um, what I guess like, I don't know what cameras can output at 6K to an external recorder, but some camera like that with an external recorder this is being able to record 6K internally or 4K and 5K at a higher frame rate. That is, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it might be a bit big, but if anything, sometimes the big, bigger weight and stuff can help with, you know, keeping a steady camera. And yeah, this is not, not for vlogging. Maybe next year or the year after we'll see 6K cameras for vlogging. But still, I think, hands down, Panasonic S1H for me. I, you know, I respect that. I, I did a little okay, bit of research into that. I, I had a couple of different options here. Um, All right. And I guess out. maybe I'll put I'll just put one out and not really go too in-depth with it because I can't relate yep. to it as much. But I'm going to put an honorable mention to the Blackmagic Pocket Camera 6K. Again, another okay. 6K camera that came out with a lot of powerful tools for filmmakers. But Yeah, not not as much for consumers, more filmmakers specific, but also only 2500 Yeah, so I mean... You know, that's com- fifteen hundred less than the Panasonic S one eight. You gotta, so, yeah, you gotta take I that, into, that one. into consideration. Um, the one I will say that I think I'm gonna go with this time around is the Sony A sixty six hundred, and uh, I felt this was a pretty reasonable upgrade. So you're getting a twenty four megapixel sensor. They upgraded to the MPF Z batteries, which is the same one used by the A seven three for pretty significant battery life improvements. You can get two hours of continuous 4K footage. And I mean, that's another plus, no recording limit. It's got IBIS autofocus with eye detect autofocus, a mic input and a flip up screen. Um, The only downsides are it's limited to 4K 30. uh, So we're not getting that 4K 60. And it does have micro USB as opposed to USB-C. But for only $1,400, I think this APS-C camera from Sony uh, is a pretty big winner for anyone looking to get into filmmaking, start a YouTube channel, or even for vlogging. I think it's packing a lot and delivering a really good value. So that's my top that, camera yeah. choice. I think that's a pretty solid one. You know, this is really the, that was the biggest upgrade we've seen Sony give to their A6000 like 6, lineup of cameras since probably the original a sixty three. I think the A sixty three hundred was the last big upgrade. I'm pretty sure, right? Or was it the A sixty four hundred? I think it was the A sixty four hundred. Yeah, that. I mean, I yeah, know. it was the A sixty four hundred. The and then A60... they released the A sixty five was just like a minor tweak of like a couple buttons and stuff. Yeah. And now the yeah the A sixty six really was a nice big meaty upgrade where they really put in some new stuff that um you know brought it down from the a7 line uh, but also introduced some new stuff that people wanted a lot to see just exclusively in the a6600 like that flip up screen that's helpful yeah i mean that i think it's more accessible to more people and you know for me i actually considered picking this up so that to me signaled it was it was a good product in my book yeah i i would agree there on but yeah i don't think we have to argue about which is better no, uh, because no, we, do we not. all know that my uh, do you choices wanna, are always going to be the better ones. Do you want to go on to innovations? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go to uh, in a, yeah, let's go to innovation. We'll go we'll go from best to worst, I guess. Go from innovations to mess to fails. Sure. All right. So. Um, 
What do you have as one of your top innovations? And let me go first. Oh, great. I was going to hope you go first. Oh, I mean, I can go first. I'm ready to go. Okay. Because I was hoping you'd take one of mine because I have so many. It's tough to decide. I, I mean, mine, I don't even know if it can count. But what I'm okay. going for here is, and maybe this could fit under the broader category of dual screen smartphones, but I'm going Microsoft Neo and Microsoft Duo. I think mm, what okay. we saw this year was a really big spattering of companies trying to get a product out that could cling on to that foldable phone buzzword. And we saw basically the first consumer product from Samsung, the Galaxy Fold, and that was a total flop. They relaunched it eventually, and now it's out. But I think Samsung's design of having the screen fold in upon itself lacks uh, long-term longevity and uh, structural integrity to some degree. Uh, we saw a few other folding devices come out. The Motorola Razr, again, folding on itself, uh, but in a vertical format. And I think Microsoft hit it out of the park. Instead of making the display fold, they just added a hinge and put in two high-quality uh, glass touchscreens for a really unique form factor and improved productivity. Uh, and I think, in my opinion, Microsoft really hit it out of the park uh, with their Surface Duo and Surface Neo devices. That yeah, I I would have to totally agree on this, um, except for the fact that it's not out yet. Yeah, so I mean that's the thing they announced it, but it's not out. Yeah. But I I still I mean it's not. I think it's hard to say. It didn't come out in 2019, so maybe it doesn't really count. But it was announced, and I think the concept is there. Um, yeah, and I think folding devices as a category made huge leap forwards even throughout the year so that's i, w I would agree with that's that. my innovation that's what we saw i had i had that on my list but i had my notes next to it was uh sorry this isn't out yet oh you know? and oh i also God. had but i, I had the t i had the tesla cyber truck too uh but that's, that's also not that's out not yet. out i had possibly the galaxy fold and that whole just the fact of folding phones but you kind of just took that yeah so. okay all right um I have the Skydio 2. That's not really out yet either, though. It's out. I mean, I'd probably give it to this. It has started. Like, it's this of all of those is the most out. I, but it's it still really true. not. It's still really, I feel like, is going to be more of a 2020 product versus 2019. So what I'm going to actually give it to is something we've already mentioned this episode. It's the Slypod. Whoa. Yeah. What? I know. Gabe, and I, what, what makes you give this award, this prestigious innovation award to the Slypod? So for me, innovation isn't necessarily about something being adopted completely or really even fully fledged out and, you know, being realized its potential. But I think as someone who is a videographer who likes to carry a lot of gear, not, I don't like to carry a lot of gear. I like to carry the ability to do a lot of different things. Unfortunately, right now that translates to a lot of gear. So any product that I can take with me that combines the uses of two products into one or shrinks the size of like, if I can take, you know, a gimbal that used to be, you know, the Ronin M require two hands and a suitcase to carry and now carry around the Ronin S, which is, you know, a briefcase style to carry. That is a huge improvement for me. So the Slypod represents the ability to bring a lot of power and production value into the field or wherever you're going uh, and a low cost and not a lot of size. So, for me, that's the biggest uh, innovation of 2019. Gabe, it's interesting you you bring that up, and yet you actually ended up ordering the. I know, right? It's it's very it's very almost hypo hypocritical, I would say. It, it is but a little. It is a little hypocritical. I mean, what what swayed you away from the Slypod? Um, can you talk a little bit more about? I mean, you think this product is so great, but yet you're not adding it to well, your. Well, like I said, I said big best innovation, not necessarily the best product. Okay, because. I think this will bring other companies um, to release similar products or to think differently about how they do different types of film gear that is until now seemed to be, all right, this is just the way we make that, you know, certain, this is how we make a slider, this is how we make a light stand, this is how we make X, Y, Z. I respect that. Uh, do we have any, do you have anything else you want to comment on for your innovations or? No, that's, that's pretty much, yeah. Maybe I mentioned all the ones. We can move on to, to meh products. Eh, meh. Yeah, no, the, I think, yeah, that's that's the next place to go. These are basically, if you don't understand, because you're not reading it, this is like the meh, kind of like products that made a shrug and go, 
all right, yeah, that's a thing now. Cool. I might buy it, but it's also not very exciting. I think this is something, a headline comes out, you pause, you read the headline, but you don't click on the article. Yeah, or you or you read the article and go, okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a thing, that's but a thing, I yeah. don't really care. All right. So, uh, do you want to start go through phones again? <laughs> go through all the phone. No, we're not. Are we doing this for every device? Or? I guess I I really only had a phone for this one. Uh, can we say it on the count of three? Because I think we have the same one. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Google Pixel Four. Pixel four. Yeah. Oh boy! Yes, we did. Wow. All right. Sorry. There goes our Google sponsorship. Apparently, <laughs> archive that email. Whoops. Yeah. Do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah. Sure. I mean, basically. I think uh, we had a pretty good summary from ARS Technica. Their review was titled Pixel 4, overpriced, uncompetitive, out of touch. The biggest flaws, battery life, started with a 2,800 milliamp hour battery, uh, 3,700 if you went with the XL. Storage speed, Pixel 4 is using a slower UFS 2.1 flash storage compared with UFS 3.0 being used on Gabe's smartphone of the year, the OnePlus 7T Pro. Uh, The design, stale with an ugly forehead and chin to accommodate for motion sense and face unlock. The 90 hertz display. All right, okay, yeah. You're you're making this sound like this needs to go into the fill category very quickly. uh, I guess I I was rambling on too much, but it it just wasn't that complete, perfect tech device. It It was just like, okay, in a lot of different ways. That's uh, I would I would put it exactly like that. Okay, that's that's meh to me. You know, I almost was gonna put like yeah. There's not really many other devices that fit in this because the Google Pixel Four is still a good phone by you know all respects, but compared to what the Pixel Three was and what other companies did to their previous version versus the current version of a smartphone, it just didn't have like a standout upgrade in any way. And considering the price, uh, it starts, I think, at eight seven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, I think it starts at seven ninety nine. More expensive than the iPhone eleven. More expensive than the iPhone eleven, and the iPhone eleven has a bigger screen and a bigger battery. Um, yeah. And you can even get a OnePlus Seven T Pro for less. So there you go. Yep. Well, all right. That's that's the meh product. I think we're only gonna just have one there, just because it was so meh. It was so that, meh. That meh fills up the whole space. All right. Now, the the thing we've been all waiting for, I think. The fails. Biggest fail. Biggest tech fails of 2019. The 2019. Wow. I mean, yeah. do you do you want to start with this? What what was your big fail? This is this is a tough one. Um because and we probably are going to hit on the same areas. You know, I really part of me wants to give it to the um Sony A7S3. <laughs> <laughs> Because it doesn't exist yet. Uh, that is a pretty big fail. I mean, so... But I don't think, that, I don't think that's, that's not really a thing. That, you can't do that. I mean, right? Sony... Like I could, otherwise, I could give it to the fact that the Apple iPhone 12 isn't out yet. No, I mean, because that's not it's expected not same, to though. be out. Yeah. That hasn't been expected to be out for the past two years. People know it's not going to come True. out until next year. Whereas Sony upgraded every single camera in their lineup. But hold on. This is, this, is, this is the thing that got me to not... <laughs> do that because in the past two months both myself and a friend of mine who shot on the a7s2 have upgraded to the a7 III and so why does it doesn't hurt sony's bottom line at all basically is my argument sure all right i guess that makes sense but unfortunately they win in the end uh yeah so my new fail of 2019 is the spectacles 3 by snapchat i I oh where did that yeah i mean I actually forgot about that product. I just yeah. stopped. I mean, Snapchat doesn't really even make products in my mind. Like, I just right. I just don't that's, even see that's that is what I think is the biggest issue. One, they went from a two hundred dollar product to I think now they're what three hundred fifty, four hundred dollars, ridiculously expensive. Made them more expensive. Uh, and that well, that was actually pretty much all they needed to do. Make it more expensive. Less people are going to be interested to try in this new, innovative like product that you really don't need but it's just kind of a cool thing to have so they did that and then because less people have it then less people are going to hear about it and less people are going to know about it and it pretty much just drops off the face of the earth 
and into like tech oblivion and maybe two years from now you can pick it up for like 50 bucks you know something like that i think what snapchat did is they took a mediocre device and made it more expensive and that that was i mean they did they did add some good and really cool things with ar and stuff which i would argue even makes it more disgraceful that it's got pushed into such obscurity because it could possibly be a cool product or at least the beginnings of a cool product, you know, in a couple of years or a couple of generations, but they increased the price so much and have just moved it to the edge of, you know, the tech space where it's, I mean, I, I, last time I saw an article about it was maybe three months ago. I saw a review about it that said basically what were they thinking? And then, yeah, that was about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's a good product to have on the list. Any other comments on the Spectacles 3, which I completely forgot about? Yeah, no, there's not really much. I don't have much to say because there's not much to say. I mean, I bought the original Spectacles. I'm definitely not going to buy these, at least until they don't half the price and or even consider buying them until they half the price. So not much to say there. We shouldn't even really say more. They don't deserve it because snapchat just yeah what are you doing yeah what so, what are you doing what is your biggest fail for 2019 i so i had a couple devices here i guess one we talked about was the galaxy fold and yeah. that was i also had that on my list i mean too. that was that is an innovation and a failure so maybe maybe but, but the interesting thing was there was for people who don't know about this marquez brownlee put together a video where a bunch of other tech youtubers basically recorded a video saying what their favorite tech product was of 2019. And do you remember who it was? I don't remember. I personally so, don't remember, but someone did say that that was their favorite product. Yeah, so Linus Tech Tips, I think, said the Galaxy Fold. I think. Okay, yeah. He really likes it. I almost want to say, um, like, Mr. Who is the Boss, I think. He might have, yeah. It, it was him or someone else, but a couple people actually really liked the Galaxy Fold. And I think what it has going for it is speed it is a fast high-end phone so it is really good at multitasking and productivity with that larger display um but in my opinion what's holding it back is that price point i mean you're in laptop territory and yeah. um the long-term durability and well, yeah that that low end non-glass display yeah yeah i mean just the the how fragile the display is i think is the biggest weakness of that uh that phone so Okay, but you didn't go with that for your fail, did you? Or? Uh, I'm not going with that. I'm going with the Canon Ivy Rec clip-on camera. Oh, you know, speaking of which, I just saw it was on sale for $79. <laughs> yeah, it, it is up? on sale for $79. So you, you, You'd pick it up at that price, right? No, no, it's so no, bad. No one should not. pick this up. It has, like, garbage two-star reviews. The only Even if Canon's paying you to buy it, maybe then, maybe consider Maybe. It. No, I don't even need crap. That is just crap. No. I wouldn't even, no, uh-uh. Um, so here's what I learned about this product. So the Canon Ivy Rec clip on camera, for those of you maybe unfamiliar, is you take a carabiner, you basically fill in half of it with a camera, and uh, then you add a mobile app so you can control the camera with your phone, and that yep. is, that's what this camera is. And uh, it turns out this was actually launched. It started as an Indiegogo campaign where oh, you could pick this camera up for $104 for the early bird price. It was then selling for $129 and is now on sale, Gabe, as you mentioned, for just $79. So, I mean, that's just a, yeah. that's a roller coaster of a product. There's no viewfinder. <laughs> people said the 1080p image, video. People were saying the image quality is just garbage. It's absolutely terrible. Um, worse than the GoPro Hero 3. I think is what um, I started with the hero three and I've just gone back in the past, I think month when I've been filming with the eight to rewatch like previous versions of my, you know, videos with different cameras. And yeah, the, the three was pretty bad, but yeah, if it's worse than that, Oh gosh, it's, it's just not a good product. So wow. that's, yeah. that's my fail. I think, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good winner there. You know, it, it looks bad, horrible specs, and honestly, because you mentioned the Indiegogo thing, that totally makes sense often because a lot of times you'll see Kickstartered or Indiegogoed, Indies, Indiegogoed, okay, that's going to be a word, yeah. Indiegogoed uh, products that, you know, are, you know, they come out and, and they make a lot of headlines because they're cool at the time, but then they take three years to come to market. And by the time they come to market, there's things that do it like two, 
thousand times better for half the price. So this, yeah, I Canon. Think a lot of people commented it was a good idea. People actually really seemed to like the idea, but it was poor execution uh, just because the image quality and the, you know what did it better is I would say is the Insta, Insta 360. Yeah, the Insta Go. 360 Go. That way better product, significantly That's better. That's a 20 gram action camera. Yeah, it's sure it's capped at I think 1440p video or maybe uh, it doesn't do 4K, you know, which is a bit of a downside. But it's for how light it is and how small, you know, it's kind of like the Ivy Rec, except for you know only slightly more expensive and way better image quality yeah so there you go that was that was my biggest fail um and there's your best alternative to the biggest fail that was not a fail yeah yeah well that's pretty much it for our best of or worst of whatever 2019 you know let us know on our social medias uh pinch to zoom pod on twitter or pinch to zoom podcast on instagram what you think the best or worst was, or if you think that we were completely right in every category, I would love to hear that, of course. Yeah, of course. We're always right here on the Pinch Zoom podcast show. Um, no, yeah. But definitely let us know what you think, what your thoughts are. Um, and if you have any other honorable mentions for phones or, or categories or what smartphone you picked up this year, like what did, what did you end up thinking was best? Uh, something I forgot was the Galaxy S10 came out. And that has the triple cameras, including the ultra wide, the fingerprint reader underneath the display, and even a headphone jack. So it's it kind of got washed away because it was so early in the year, uh, but still a pretty yeah, good phone, wow. I would say. I'm trying to th- uh, you know what? One thing that also didn't make out could have been the biggest fails is your aperture lights. Oh, ooh, those nice RGB lights that you wanted so much. I, yeah, it's true. They're just not available. End of summer, yeah. they said, and now it's End like of summer winter. Well, end of summer 2020, maybe we'll have to shoot for it. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. We probably only have one more episode. I don't know. I kind of want to do, try to do two more episodes before the end of the year so we could maybe do a look back at the decade. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll at least have one more episode before the end of 2019. So we'll talk to you then, guys, I guess. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Get some snow tires. Drive safe yeah. if it's snowing where you are. Be safe. Be warm. Be cozy. Be comfortable. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. As Gabe mentioned, you can follow us on social media. And yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Stetson. And I'm Gabe. And we look forward to talking to you next time. We have now published officially 26 episodes, which means we officially held a bi-weekly podcast. Well, bi-weekly can also mean twice a week. I guess we did do that. That's what I meant. So we have to pump out uh, 104 episodes. Let's just stream live (laughs) until the end of the year. And then we just cut at random points. All right. Welcome to the Pinch to Zoom livecasts. Pinch to Zoom.